There's an often overlooked weather product in aviation that can add tons of value to your flight planning. While many of us check radar imagery which shows precipitation, position, intensity, and trend, we often skip over satellite imagery. Here's how we can use it to plan a flight. When we're talking about weather satellites, we're talking about the Geostationary Operational Environmental Satellite, GOES for short. What does it mean that the satellites are geostationary? Let's demonstrate using, of course, the Space Simulator Kerbal Space Program. If we put a satellite into a low orbit, like where the International Space Station might be, gravity is still relatively strong close to the Earth. In order for the satellite to stay in orbit and not fall down to the ground, it needs to be going fast. We could see our satellite here moving fast relative to the ground below. If we were to take a picture of a specific point on the Earth, we wouldn't be able to get the same shot until we orbit all the way around and come back to it again, which doesn't allow us to see real-time changes in weather. A bit farther out, where gravity is less strong, we can orbit at a slower speed. The ground below is moving too, remember, since the Earth is rotating. So if we're slow enough, we should be able to stay over a fixed point, like that continent below that kind of looks like Africa. But at this altitude, we're still moving too fast to stay stationary over the ground. We need to be higher up, at a very specific altitude where our orbital speed matches the rotational speed of the planet, so we stay over that same continent as we circle around. Any higher than this, and we'll now be going slower than the Earth is rotating, and Africa starts moving away from us. So it's only at a geostationary orbit, a specific altitude, over the equator, where we're able to park a satellite over a point and snap continuous photos, tracking weather changes as they occur. This is the view of one of the GOES satellites, positioned over the equator over South America. From the animation, you can see it stays in the same spot, looking down on a portion of the globe it can see. Over Ecuador, it's looking straight down, while over the US, it's looking at an angle. This is one of the two satellites. This one is GOES East, and together with GOES West, the continental US gets complete coverage. There are many ways of getting satellite imagery. Let's go straight to the National Weather Service website. We can pull up the GOES Imagery Viewer. We'll click on Southern California and surrounding areas. There are a bunch of imagery products to choose from, but we can separate them into just two groups. The Visible Satellite, which is an intuitive approximation of what you'd see with your own eyes, and Infrared, which is able to detect heat. For visible, we use band two. Here's what a typical morning looks like over California. Notice the slanted view we have from the satellite. We're looking north from over the equator so the camera doesn't shoot straight down. This is a limitation, but we still get a very good picture of clouds. The first thing to notice is that the picture starts out dark. Before sunrise, the visible satellite view won't be able to see anything another limitation of the visible band that's fixed by infrared as we'll see in a bit. There are two major types of clouds depicted here. Over northern and central California, they take a more jagged, puffy form. These are stratus clouds. We're seeing the tops of them. Further south, just barely kissing the coastal area in some places, the clouds are smoother and a bit darker. Over land, they closely follow the hills and valleys of the terrain. This is fog. It can be very valuable to distinguish areas with fog from areas with merely low ceiling stratus clouds. The METARs may only tell part of the story. Today, thick fog is reported in Oxnard with vertical visibility of 200 feet. We're seeing the same thing a bit up the coast at Vandenberg. Roughly in between them though, Santa Barbara is showing clear skies. The satellite imagery here helps fill in important context. As you can see up north in San Francisco, the clouds are broken at 800 feet. IFR for sure, but no fog. Now here's the infrared for the same area, same time frame. It's band 14 or long wave infrared, but most weather products will just label it infrared. Notice first that there's no transition from night to day. Infrared imagery provides information around the clock. Also now notice the colors over Oregon. They closely resemble what you see on a radar return, but they're not showing precipitation. It's showing areas of colder temperatures. The higher up you go in the atmosphere, the colder it gets. So an infrared return showing cold temperatures indicates higher cloud tops. The most severe returns would indicate extensive vertical development like in a thunderstorm, but they can also just be showing frontal passage. Play around with both the visible and infrared satellite imagery on your next flight planning session and see if you can correlate what you're seeing in other weather info like METARs with what the eye in the sky is telling us. As always, if you're looking for top-tier training, 
Join over 10,000 pilots on flight insight ground schools today at the link here and in the description.